Hi guys, this is episode three of the free house challenge and we're outside here on week number 10. And as you can see, we've made really, really good progress. So we're gonna go inside and obviously show you what we've been up to over the last few weeks. Uh, but before we do that, I'm just gonna talk about what we've done outside. So as you can see, we've had the digger here, we've completely dug up uh, the driveway um, and also we've been painting uh, the outside uh, of the house. We've got new fences in. So uh, it was actually meant to be pouring this in terms of the concrete uh, today, but obviously the great South End weather uh, has held that off. So obviously we're not doing that today, but make sure you watch until the end because we're gonna be, get, we're gonna be going through the figures, how much we've spent today, and also um, based on what we've currently spent, what we believe our projected uh, final cost will be to convert this seven bed HMO. So let's go inside, take a look around, and then we'll talk about the figures at the end. So as I said, this is week number 10 on site. We made really good progress uh, internally. We've insulated and boarded all of the ceilings and actually we're fully plastered now apart from the back room and actually we've had the decorator here. So let's go inside and take a look around. So coming through, um, again, this is bedroom number one. As you can see, we are fully plastered and actually the benefit of this house was it actually was newly plastered. Usually on these big old Victorian houses, you have to scrape off three or four layers of wallpaper, but on this one, that wasn't the case. So we've actually managed to salvage a lot of the walls and just basically skim um, some of the walls. Again, that's gonna be saving on cost. Usually on a house like this, we'd spend roughly about eight to 9,000 pounds to plaster the whole house, but this is actually cost us about 4,000. So there's a cost saving there, uh, but let's work our way through. The guys are currently putting down the 12 mil ply uh, on the floors, we're overboarding the chipboard because we've had to We've had to take those up to run our uh, plumbing and electrics and wastes, etc. So, uh, you know, a bit of a mishmash. So you can overboard them now just so we've got a, a blank surface to work from. Uh, but this is going to be bedroom number two. Uh, we had to replace this window here uh, because it wasn't at the correct height. It was 1.2 off the floor and it had to be 1.1. So we've replaced that. Again, fully plastered in here and the plies going down. Coming through, this is the kitchen diner. UPVC windows have been installed. And yeah, I love it at this stage. It starts to feel good. Um, it's, it's clean and well, almost there. But uh, again, look, ply down on the floor. And we've got our UPVC door in. We've actually, Luke here is fitting the door. This is going to be a fire door. So we've just put in the door liners. This is going to be a fire door. So this is our fire lobby because obviously we've got a bedroom off the back uh, coming off the kitchen. So it's important that we have that. So you'll have a fire door and then you'll step through to uh, the bedroom. Yes, this is a 10 square meter bedroom, obviously with an ensuite. Um, and this is the first time we've done three bedrooms on the ground floor, but because the house has just been extended over the years, uh, it just obviously suited uh, the additional bedroom. Let's go outside and take a look around. So as you can see, we did like a courtyard style garden. Again, I think I would have covered it on the other videos, but this garden's quite long. It was like 18 uh, meters long. So we were unsure what to do. We just would have lost a lot of cost by uh, you know, doing astro or turf or maybe doing slabs over the whole garden. So we just decided to separate it. We'll just keep that land out the back. And obviously we're putting a gate in there so we can still access it. But uh, it's just a courtyard style garden, low maintenance. Obviously it's muddy at the moment, but we'll jet wash through once we're out. And then we'll have our bin store and bike store out here. Uh, the back of the house has started to be painted at a low level. And we've got our black plinth. Um, so obviously as and when the weather permits, we'll paint the rest of the house and it'll start to, uh, yeah, start to look a little bit like the, the front. We've got all of our soil stacks in, as you can see there, obviously that's connecting up all of the en suites uh, and all of our drainage is in as well. So externally, once we've painted, we're pretty much there. Coming through, this is where the hot water cylinders are gonna be situated. And as you can see here, we've actually got the, um, all of the plumbing uh, under pressure. So it's on test. So that's where water passes through the system to ensure there's no leaks anywhere. And also as the guys are putting down the ply, if they go through one of the pipes, obviously we'll lose pressure, we'll know about it. So the water's under pressure, which is really important. Going upstairs, 
Uh, so yeah, up on the first floor now, it's mad really to think that we're only 10 weeks through uh, on this. We've got paint on the walls already, so we're fully plastered up here on the first floor. The decorator is uh, here spraying, and actually we decided to do uh, like an up and over coat, so we're just gonna spray the walls and the ceilings the same color, just to save time and money. And also we've started to tile uh, the en suites. So shower trays are in. We've also started to tile the en suites up here. Not a bad tile, we haven't gone real budget on those. That was about 20 pound a square meter, those tiles. So a bit of a mid range. Um, <clears throat> coming through, you've got the communal toilet and we just decided to do LVT in there on the floors because uh, that is just a spare toilet. It's not gonna get much use. So rather than tile another uh, sort of toilet, and with, with additional cost, we've just decided to LVT it. We'll do a little splashback. So that's gonna be the toilet. <clears throat> Coming through the large bedroom, again, this has all been sprayed. LVT flooring is down, hence why it's been protected um, <clears throat> to a degree. And obviously the tilers are now gonna move on to this uh, large ensuite. And the tilers, I think we pay about 45 pound per square meter. Uh, for tiling on top of the cost of the tiles. Also, there's a you know there's some boards, some cement boards to fit, and also uh, some some beading and some edging and stuff like that. So that's the cost of the tiling. But um, we are yeah, as you can see, making great progress. Obviously, out here we'll do the carpet tiles and uh, sort of our our stair nosing. We have actually got. Um, carpet tiles and stair nosing um, left over from our other job. Uh, so it's not actually gonna come at a cost, but what I will do to make it fair for the free house challenge, I am gonna allocate a cost to, uh, as if we were going out to buy it again. Coming through, this is the smallest bedroom in the house, but as I said, this is the leftover carpet tiles and also um, the stair nosing. So, <clears throat> to be fair for the challenge, I'll allocate a cost for that, even though we haven't got to go out and rebuy it. Again, door liners are in, and obviously we will now be moving on to second fix. And then you've got these two bedrooms, so. Um, and you can really start to feel the sort of end goal in sight now. When the laminate's down, and obviously the, the, the walls and ceilings are painted, uh, and freshly plastered, you start to get a bit of feel for the house. So. Um, yeah, obviously we've got a delivery of skirting arcs, doors coming, so that'll be the next stage as we as we move on to second fix. And now that the ceilings are uh, all painted, we can move on to second fix electrics and also second fix plumbing. So we'll start to fit some rads and light switches, spotlights, and all that sort of thing. So I'd imagine within the next couple of weeks we should have power on and add some lights on as well. So another one of the bedrooms. What I didn't mention actually in that other room, as a bit of a cost saving, um, the windows that we have, uh, they weren't bottom openers, bottom openers, but obviously as a requirement for uh, the fire eggs, they would expect a bottom, bottom opener. Uh, they actually had top openers. So Luke, our builder, managed to switch them around to ensure that we had a bo bo bottom opener, which then uh, allowed us uh, a cost saving there, rather than have to go out and replace the um, window itself. So that is it up on the first floor. So guys, that is the update after week number 10. The guys reckon we've only got about another four weeks on site. So there'll be a couple more episodes to follow. Obviously this is episode three. If you haven't seen the other episodes, make sure you click the link up here. But as I said, we're 10 weeks in and the current spend on this site is 54,000. Uh, so we're well on budget. We're trying to get this completed within a build cost of roughly about 120 to 130,000. We have got uh, money on account at PGR for some materials, but obviously we've got that on a 30 day account. And then also we can use uh, the Amex to extend that payment term by another 55 days and get some air miles as well. So uh, that is our plan. We're managing the cash flow because obviously we're managing multiple sites, but the current spend on this is 54,000. And I believe that we should uh, achieve our target of roughly 120 to 130. So if we can do that, it's another big tick and all we would then be reliant on is the end valuation to achieve uh, a free house. So that's where we are, end of week 10, episode three. Look forward to the next episode.